I am Arma, and you're watching the program Ethnosport. Today I'm going to have a physically challenging day. Unfortunately, six months ago, while snowboarding, I made a mistake and got an injury. So I didn't do much ever since. So today I will have my first serious workout after a long break. Let's go! Cross-country running is believed to have originated in England. The first official competitions were held at the end of the 19th century. But few people know that the ancient nomads have been holding these competitions for thousands of years. The Kazakhs call it Zhayao Zharis. Medieval historian Nizam al Mulk also mentioned Zhayao Zharis in his records. This type of competition was common among the Turkic people. Both women and men participated in it. Cross-country running was popular among the commoners. The competitions usually did not offer the winner expensive prizes. The race was held as part of the big festivities during major celebrations. Artyom, you're doing great. He runs so fast. Well done. He spared me a little today, realizing that I was out of shape. How long have you been doing this, Artyom? I've started to train seriously only three months ago. Have you progressed during this time? Well, at the moment I have already run races like 35 km long Tengri. Although, in fact, we had 36.6 kilometers, so that confused me, but I finished the distance. In principle, pretty good. I did it in four hours. Two weeks later, I took part in Kemistreo. Then I did the half marathon in the mountainous terrain, which was 21 kilometers long. I ran with my dog. So we finished 21 kilometer distance in two hours and 50 minutes. You have already been doing this for three months and you have already achieved so much. Then tell me, what is the main thing to know for a person who wants to try to run cross-country? What are the skills a person must develop? The main thing is the desire to run. You must run until it becomes a habit. But you mustn't start with 10 kilometers immediately. You should start with shorter distances, like 3 kilometers, and then increase the distance gradually. You should run every other day, not every day, because it takes its toll on the body. Well, if we're talking about distances, what distances are there in cross-country? Well, originally, the distance varied between 3 and 12 kilometers. Now there are also health marathons, marathons and ultra-marathons reaching 50 kilometers. In America, there are championships for a distance of 150 kilometers. Athletes run 150 kilometers without taking a break. The longest distance we have in Kazakhstan is Ultra Tengri, which is 70 kilometers. Well, this year I haven't been running this distance yet. The longest I have is 35 kilometers. I agree with this. According to Artyom, if you want to run a competition, then you need to train a lot. You mustn't train in the stadium, but learn to run cross-country. Here you have the shades and fresh air. And there is no that monotony as when you run in circles in the stadium. This is the difference between cross-country and sports running. Cross-country implies a rugged terrain, so you can run and enjoy the natural beauty at the same time. Thank you, I had a small break. Let's go now. Let's go now. Let's go. There is nothing more pleasant than morning joke in the park. I know that lovers of Canicross come here often. Here they are, and I want to meet them. Hello, guys. Hi! How beautiful they are! You have so many dogs! And who can tell me what canicross is? Canicross is the sport of cross-country running with dogs. It requires the simplest equipment, a harness, a sling and a belt. And of course the dogs and the athletes and dogs desire to run. And where did the sport originate? Who invented it? It appeared in Europe. 
It suits those people who lead an active lifestyle, who love and have dogs. So people involve themselves and their pets in doing sport. Although Canicross appeared in Europe, its origins go thousands of years back in history, Arman believes. He is a professional archaeologist, a historian, and he has been studying this sport for some time now. Dogs in the Great Steppe were domesticated before our era, just like the horses and ship, he says. Dogs were the loyal assistants to the nomads. They herded the cattle, guarded their homes and accompanied during hunts and in battles. That is why the nomads treated these animals with special respect. They were considered one of the seven treasures. It is clear that in those conditions, the nomads and their dogs had to travel long distances in cross-country terrain. And now, this lifestyle element has turned into sport in Kazakhstan. How widely known is this sport in Kazakhstan? Or are you alone? This sport was revived in Kazakhstan nearly 10 years ago. Our federation is quite young, just one year old. We have nine branches in Kazakhstan. Last year, we joined the FISTC International Federation. We are growing. How many members are there in your federation? At the moment, we have about 80 people. And here I see, you have an unusual form of transport. This is a scooter. Scooter? Yes, scooter is another sport. On a scooter, you can participate with one dog or two dogs. Here, as you can see, it is quite an extreme type of sport. It suits those who love the outdoor activities. Can I join the Federation just for today and try all these things that you're talking about? Let's get started. I can offer you a ride with dogs now. In addition to cross-country, I do the riding sports. So I do carnicross, scootering and karting. Here we have the karting carts. We can have either two or four dogs. So it is very similar to those dog sleds in Siberia, the ones the Chukchi people used for dogs and deer. I will try it with pleasure. Thank you. Please explain to me how this works. You stand here, left foot, right foot. You have brakes on all three wheels, just like on my motorbike. Well, basically, that's it. The main thing is to hold on and turn. Good. And it reminds me of the Saka chariot. Here it is. Well, let's go. Off we go. Well, this was amazing. Riding with the dogs feels so wonderful. I cannot fully convey my impressions. Everyone should try it for themselves. The dogs are very strong. They are really strong and they pull really hard. I had to hold them. I am generally not afraid of speed, but today I got scared. Artem, thank you so much for this opportunity. What is the name of the sport again? This is called a kart racing. It was a yellow go-kart. This is my instructor Artem. And these were two power dogs. They are so vibrant. They are so fluffy.
And this is my new friend. His name is Akela. Akela, high five. Well, well, now it's time for the most exciting part of our show. A run with a single dog. Artem, are you ready? You can never be ready for this, but you have to start at some point. Go! Well, it's easier to run with a single dog. Akela is such a good boy, he cuts corners well. Well done, well done, boy. Well, I really liked it. Canny Cross is something new to me. Well, Akele is such a great dog. At one point he felt that I was tired and he slowed his pace down. My first impression is, of course, that it was easier to run. But taking into account my physical preparation and shape right now, taking into account that I had to run just before, it was quite hard. I encourage everyone should try this sport. Akela, I never thought that I loved dogs. Arman still has strengths for some other physical activities. Therefore, the film crew convinced him to go to the gym for the next workout, the Zhikbezhek match. Well, my training with the dogs is over. Honestly, I run as much as I could. And my batteries are already half empty. But I will soon have to change my motorcycle gloves for boxing gloves. Do I have enough strength? Well, if not, we'll have to change my job soon. Zhikbezhik literally means a one-on-one -on -one fight in the Kazakh language. The name says it all. This is a special kind of martial arts that has a centuries-long history. Currently, Zhikbezhik is being revived across the country. But I think that coach Tursin Mazabek will tell you more about the sport. We are the generation of Batirs. A child must grow to become strong. That is why we need to engage our children in doing sport from a young age. So we must train our young athletes. Sports like karate, kickboxing, jiu-jitsu are very effective. We often attend competitions in such sports. Then the winners of these competitions are challenged to compete in Zhikbezhek. Kazakhstan holds lots of tournaments and a cup in Zhikbezhek. Zhikbezhek is a duel of the Central Asian nomads. According to the military tradition, any battle started with the one-on-one -on -one Zhikbezhek match between the strongest of the Batirs from the warring sides. These often determine the outcome of the entire battle. Warriors had about 15-17 wrestling techniques, and this was enough to defeat even the most ominous opponent. Zhikbezhek was a mixed martial art, but in the modern sport, it has definite rules. There are special rules. A special rule, for example, is not to scratch. Sticking fingers into an eye of the opponent, grabbing an opponent by the hair, bit in the back of the head or the spine. You cannot bite. Потом кусаться нельзя. Вот скажем, в ММА, например, 
For example, in mixed martial arts, there are competitions for children starting from six years old and up. These are amateur tournaments. The athletes wear special gear. For example, they have leg pads and helmets. Zhekpezhek fighters have minimum protection. They wear a mouth guard, hand gloves and a special gear for the lower body. To participate in such a fight, the fighter must be fearless and courageous. Kaban Bayvatu was the most courageous fighter of all times. He lived in the 17th-18th centuries. He had 108 Zhekpezhek fights where he won all of them. He had his last fight at the age 78 years and struck down his strong opponent. We should be proud of our Batirs. Every Kazakh has it in his DNA, the skill to fight in the Zhekpezhek. That's why we continue doing the sport and we must develop further. Tursun, you are on a great mission. You train the Batirs. In your gym, I remember my childhood. This is the kind of the gym I used to go to and do boxing. These are the kind of places that train future champions. I wish your students and followers to win all the fights, and they all follow in your footsteps. These are great people, literally and figuratively. Dear viewers, I want to introduce you to one very unique person. He is only 16 years old, he has been doing this sport for only one year and he is already the champion of Kazakhstan. He has 23 medals already. He trains in the club called Asar Arlan and his name is Rahat Maradhan. I have always dreamed of being a champion. Look at these medals. They are so heavy. Many of them are golden. I want to ask Rahat one thing. 23 medals mean that he must have at least the same number of strikes. Can you show us your 23 strikes? And your mentor Tursun will comment. Let's get started. A striking demonstration of combat skills and qualities. Rahat. I hope that this knowledge and skills will be used only for good purposes. In you, I see the embodiment of your mentor's dream that a new generation of talented Batirs is growing up in Kazakhstan. Today is truly a day of the champions, and I want to introduce you to another one. He is only 10 years old, he has been training for 5 years now. Please meet Tolehan Ablai. He has countless medals, almost all of them are golden. And this medal he received the day before yesterday at a championship in the capital of Kazakhstan. I am proud of you, Tadeuhan. High five. Well, my workout is coming to an end. It was an amazing day. I am very tired. You've seen it all for yourselves. I am glad that I met such unique people, tried such unique sports. My advice to everyone, do sports. Do not delay until Monday. Start right now. This was Ethnosport. I'll see you in the next episode.